Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. So here we are having a look at the Eternal Storm as you can see behind me and we're going to go through its systems, the extra uh, systems it can get and some ideas and some builds uh, that should work for it. Bit of an odd one this, um, I haven't managed to get personal use out of it because I don't have much of the subsystems uh, and so compared to my SD59 um, it's kind of like I get better tank and probably only slightly less damage than I do on the ES. Uh, but I have seen some of these subsystems in use and uh, other systems in use and stuff. And it can dish out quite a lot of damage. I think in the right builds and right fleets, it will absolutely excel. Quick shout out to Ozzy, Pork and Tiddles. They helped me a lot here. As you can see, I only have one system for the ES. So they have provided screenshots for me to be able to create this video. Something to note, I am missing D2. Uh, it's an energy AA slot. Uh, so I'll mention it and we'll talk about it quickly. But I won't unfortunately have a proper screenshot of that. Something also, if you want to help me out, I am missing one uh, system on the uh, Constantine the Great, uh, that is slot B2, uh, so if you have that uh, in the description, you can go on Discord, find me in the server and my server and ping me a screenshot over, that would be really, really helpful and you'll get a shout out if you want one or if you want to stay anonymous, you can also do so. So let's have a quick look at sort of the base systems here uh, on the Eternal Storm, what they're like and what you can uh, sort of maybe you get upgrades on and stuff like that. So we'll start off with the um, going into the blueprint design because that'll probably be easier. So A1, you have the standard system that comes on it and it's not a bad system 600 damage per hit uh, with an almost uh, 11,300 uh, dpm on it fires two torps because there's two systems here that just hit really really damn hard the fact that this is such a high damage per hit means that the mitigation of armor is not really going to affect it unless it's in the case of an SD-59 where you can halve this damage almost, which is pretty nice. But yeah, pretty decent system. Also comes with these nice little cluster missiles, uh, which fire pretty decently. And they're, you know, they're firing quite a lot. Four rounds times one, 55 damage a hit. 6.8 second uh, cooldown as well so you know they're firing these missiles off pretty regularly the fact also 55 damage a hit is not too much of a problem because this is supposed to be targeting destroyers and frigates and they don't have much uh, damage mitigation so yeah this should do pretty damn well at knocking out enemy uh, small ships quite well now in place of the A1 slot you can go into A2 and all this does is adds in and removes those missiles but you get siege torpedo launcher now you lose your anti uh, small from the cluster missiles that you lose and then you gain some siege torpedo missiles which have got a worse damage per hit but they're firing one times three attacks per round and a pair of them so uh six second duration three uh, torps going out times two because there's uh, two weapon systems so it's actually got a better dpm but it's also giving you a pretty decent increase in siege damage so you're you know reducing your versatility of anti-ship damage with the missile uh, missiles being you know removed but then you're gaining the siege damage so you're, you're gaining a different type of versatility as it were as this will now be better against uh sort of cities and the like but yeah it's it's not a bad not a bad little uh weapon system i still think for the versatility sake that the main a1 system that we showed uh, earlier is probably better in slot than this one but if you are specifically targeting uh, maybe outposts and cities and other player bases this could come into its own and having that increased the uh siege dpm 
will definitely help you out in taking the cities down before their aircraft knock you out. We then go to A3, and there's two parts to A3 here. So you have its main uh, main system, which is this Supernova White Torpedo System. It's the same as the base system, firing one attack per round with a 20 second cooldown, three, five second lock on time. So as we know already, that's pretty decent. It's a little less uh, damage uh, DPM than the base system. But in place of that, you then gain uh, the anti-aircraft missile array, which prioritizes aircraft instead of um, small, which isn't too bad. It's firing uh, one attack per round with 16 cluster missile damage on it. So it's 16 times 84, and there's a pair of these, so times two. So 32 instances of 84 damage potentially to hit your enemy corvettes and fighters. After it's attacked those, it's then going on to destroyers and frigates with a slightly less uh, damage per minute. Overall, this is a lower DPM, but it does add aircraft. So again, this is a versatility trade-off of do you want more anti-air or do you want more anti-ship and anti-small? So yeah, not bad. Other than that, the, uh, the torps are more or less the same. We can then have a look at the M1 slot. So you have the Vigan Ion Generation System. So this is the main weapon system. This will get knocked out by system damage, so bear that in mind if you are upgrading it. But it's a 1600 damage per minute, huge amount of damage per minute um, ion cannon that does prioritize large. So it's starting with battleships, carriers, auxiliary ships, battle cruisers, and then cruisers. Has a little bit of siege damage, but not really there for that. Eight second duration with a cooldown of 10 seconds with a four uh, time damage frequency. That means during those eight seconds, every two seconds, you'll have one instance of damage with a six second lock on time. It's a pretty decent weapon system, to be honest. Uh, but again, it's not immune to uh, the fact that it can get knocked out. In place of the M1 slot, you can have M2, where you get the Plasma Caster. Now, this is large as well, with 850 damage per hit, with a 20 second duration, one attacks per round, uh, one times four attacks per round. You get a pair of these instead of just the one big cannon, a six second cooldown, and a five second lock on time. This is the DPM King and is best in slots in any and all instances, pretty much. So if you have this one, do run the Plasma Caster. It is better than the Vigan uh, Ion system. We then look over at the energy. So this is in C, uh, C1. So C1, you have anti-air UAVs. You carry area denial anti-aircraft UAVs. They're not bad. They're very similar to the light cones area denial um, aircraft UAVs. So yeah. They could be used, it's up to you. Uh, th this is very much a utility slot, uh, as you'll see. So we have anti-air uh, UAVs. In C2, you have carry shield UAVs, a defensive UAV that adopts special shield technology. It supports the ship for defense by circling enemy targets and deflecting energy attacks with its shield. Basically, this has the potential to completely mitigate energy damage from ships. Well, not completely. It's a chance to mitigate energy damage from ships. Um, it's really quite interesting, this one. I've heard it doesn't work particularly well. I haven't, unfortunately, been able to test it myself as obviously not owning it. But it's an interesting concept, and I haven't really been able to test it uh, personally. So it could be pretty good. But in my opinion, it's not as good as the energy compensation armor, which is a guaranteed 15% reduced energy weapon attack, 15% uh, reduced damage from projectiles, and a 30% reduced crit damage. Just because this is a guaranteed uh, percentage damage removal, etc., I think it's just best in slot on this ship as well. It's kind of similar to the uh, plasma caster it's you're probably going to be always running that 
We then come to a load of the ones that I don't have. So in D1, we have the Ion Turret system. This is an additional system again, and it provides an 800 damage per hit Ion Cannon. Three second duration, a 3.4 second cooldown, one damage frequency, so as soon as it fires, it just does all of its damage, basically. And with a five second lock on, it's an energy weapon, Energy weapons are good. This is just going to provide even more DPM for your Eternal Storm and counters uh, high armor targets pretty nicely. D2 uh, is the one that I don't have, and that is the uh, Pulse Turret System. You gain a Rapid Fire Near Defense Pulse Cannon. So it's a intercepting incoming aircraft and missiles in short range. Probably not worth it overrunning more damage uh, overall. The Eternal Storm is very much catered to anti-large as opposed to anti-anything else. Um, so it loses that versatility, I think, and these systems just don't make up for the versatility and don't add any additional versatility. Bar, you know, the A1 slot. Uh, sorry, yeah, no, this one. A1 slot giving the Eternal Polaris. Uh, system so yeah it's it's not too bad we then have b1 uh, which is the rapid fire cannon systems able to rock on to small ships and uh, stuff like that and basically it's just more anti-small meh i don't think that's how you really build the es personally we then go on to b2 uh, if you bear with me a second, there we go. So, B2, you gain a uh, another generic cannon. It's anti-aircraft, damage per hit's 20. It's okay. I personally wouldn't run this either. So, if it was me, I would be running, um, if I had them, you'd be running the Plasma Caster, uh, the sorry, the plasma caster in your M, uh, M slot, so M2. You'll be running the base version of uh, the A slot, so A1, that's the anti shock torpedo with the cluster missile. In your C slot, you'll be running your experimental energy compensation armor because more survivability just means you'll get more DPM out. And I don't believe the anti aircraft UAVs uh, will sort of matter and the energy mitigation UAVs, well, the armor kind of does that itself a little bit and it's a more of a guaranteed as opposed to uh, chance. So I think that's probably best in slot there. B1 is probably your best in slot, just getting more damage onto the ship. Yes, it's mostly anti-small, uh, anti but having the ability to you know, it will attack large ships as well, and having some anti, more anti-small as opposed to just having it on the uh, cluster missile system is definitely gonna help out a bit there. And then you want D1 for your additional system, uh, just to increase its anti-large capability with more energy damage. So yeah, this is an absolute beast of an energy ship with the plasma caster and D1 being that extra uh, ion cannon, basically. It's just going to decimate anything with high armor and that has low uh, shield resistances. Uh, things like chimeras and stuff, this thing will absolutely and utterly melt apart. Even the likes of spears and stuff could potentially see some serious damage being hit by these things. And they have a pretty high health and a pretty decent in the tanking role. Um, the only thing that really uh, worries me is, is it enough to keep up with a CTG and a maxed out spear? Uh, don't know yet, but uh, we'll definitely be finding that out soon when I cover the CTG and the spear. Anyway guys, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.